So it was Friday night at 11 p.m. I was just about to swipe my hospital physician ID badge to enter the emergency department. And there was a lot going on for me. I just needed to take a deep breath. My mom had just been diagnosed with cancer. I was entering yet another surge of COVID. And I think this was like the fourth overnight shift in a row. I couldn't even keep track at that point. So I took a deep breath and swiped my ID and the emergency department doors swung open and I was greeted by that familiar chaotic cacophony of patient alarm bells ringing, ambulance sirens going off, radios crackling, a patient vomiting over there in the corner. That was a really hard shift for me. There was this moment when I saw a number of my colleagues running in a direction. And in the emergency department, we don't run unless something's really wrong. So I ran. And I'll still remember it as I was rounding that corner I saw that a patient was assaulting one of my colleagues and my colleague then became my patient and the injuries that my colleague sustained would have permanent effects on their life. I quickly learned as I was caring for them. Being an emergency medicine attending physician is really, really hard. And there's a reason why emergency clinicians across the globe are burning out left, right, and center. The good news is that I have an antidote for burnout in emergency medicine. And that antidote is trauma-informed care. Now, before you interrupt me and ask, well, why would I ask busy clinicians to do something more? What I have to tell you is that I had those same questions, but the more that I've striven to integrate trauma-informed care into my practice, the more I've seen that it gives me deeper meaning in the work and brings me back to the very reasons why I chose emergency medicine in the first place. So what do I mean by trauma? As an emergency physician, I thought that when we're talking about trauma, we're talking simply about physical trauma, gunshot wounds, stabbings, motor vehicle accidents. And what I've come to learn is that trauma is so much more. Trauma is collective, like what we're all experiencing right now in terms of COVID. Also on the collective level, racism is a form of trauma. On the individual level, it's many of the things that you might think of, including assault, like my colleague experienced. So knowing this expansive definition and knowing that not just all of my patients have experienced some sort of trauma, but also many of my colleagues and staff members have experienced trauma. It's imperative, it's vital that emergency medicine take a universal precautions approach when it comes to practicing medicine and incorporate trauma-informed care into everything we do. It should really be the default mode. Now, what do I mean by what this looks like in practice? There are it's, you know, it's a framework based on six principles. Let me take you back to that same shift to a patient I was caring for right after I took care of my colleague. And she was a woman, a young woman who came in with a, a toe infection. And I, she was in a curtain room. There was no door. So I announced myself before entering the room. And I asked if it'd be okay if I came in. I found a stool somewhere and was sitting at eye level with her and just asked simple questions like, how can I help you today? Um, And immediately she told me, I have this infection in my toe. I just, I really want antibiotics and I want to get out of here as soon as possible. And um, she's like, please, please, please don't tell me I need a procedure. And I asked her to tell me more about that. And she shared that the last procedure that she'd had in a hospital um, was a really traumatizing experience. And in fact, as she was telling me this, she started to get sweaty and she looked like she would almost pass out on me. I told her, we're, you know, everything is your choice and there's nothing we're gonna do without um, your permission. Also, we have strategies 
that can make it a less stressful experience if you do need a procedure. And, and I was recommending a procedure. And so together we came up with a plan that involved doing the procedure, but she was going to distract herself on her cell phone and try some deep breathing. I was very candid if something was going to hurt during the procedure. And before I did anything, including examine her, would ask her permission at every turn. What surprises me um, and, and surprises me every time is that she thanked me as a result of that encounter. Um, and what I've learned over time is that practicing trauma-informed care gives strength not only to my patients, but gives more strength to me. I feel like I'm healing beyond treating the immediate medical condition. And I feel less burned out and more invigorated and more connected to the work. I feel renewed. Spending time in nature is one way that I recharge outside of the emergency department. And the other day I came across these gorgeous flowers called fireweed. Fireweed got its name because in London after World War II bombings, it just flourished on the rooftops. It flourishes and thrives in the fire. Today, I want us to collectively envision a world where emergency medicine is like fireweed, not surviving in spite of fire, but because of the fire. When trauma-informed care is integrated into all of emergency medicine, the trauma that clinicians and patients carry will lead to meaning and renewal, and we can move from surviving to thriving.